Here we go, Dr. Johnson. First question for you, or first statement. Therapy for kids is a waste of time, pandemic or not, myth or fact? Totally a myth. Please explain. That's, that's not even a myth. That's an outright lie. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like everybody, even people that are, that are well-adjusted and doing well and feeling like things are good, everybody can benefit from a good therapy session or, or a good therapy relationship, right? We, we always can have new skills. We always can, can process our anxieties. And especially when we're talking about a time like this, where, you know, I know, I know we're, we're specifically talking about COVID, right. And all the things that go with COVID, but there, there are other upheavals going on right now and other scary things going on in the world. And I mean, I, I personally have had a much better time dealing with all of this because I've been able to process it with my therapist. And I know that, you know, all of the kids that I've talked to, once we've actually been able to kind of talk it out, that brings the anxiety down a little bit. So no, therapy is great. And here's the kicker. Um, this is probably the best time for therapy because it's going to be the most convenient because like my office has been virtual since the middle of March, right? We're doing teletherapy. This is what my patients see most of the time, right? Um, you know, having to get your kid to the therapist or whatever is, is not necessarily going to be as big an issue as it has been. So it's super convenient right now. A lot of people are doing remote work. Now is the time. Gotcha. So. Thank you, Dr. Johnson, for stating that case. Here we go, Dr. Kovar. Here's a statement. It is unsafe for children to wear face masks. Myth, myth or fact? Uh, it's actually got a little bit of a truth to it, especially if you have any kind of a respiratory issue, if children have um, maybe a heart disease or something like that. But for the majority of kids over the age of two, you're going to be fine. Excellent. Here you go. I'm going to do this one because I said it's going to participate. Here's a statement. Encouraging your children to practice good hand hygiene will not make a difference. The answer is false. That is a myth. It will make a difference. Wash your hands 20 seconds. Encourage it all the time. And maybe give your kid a little bit of a smile and a, a smile or maybe a little toy if they do it. I'm just joking. Don't do this. Up. Parents don't go crazy on that one. But it is a myth. You need to wash longer hand children of role play here we go dr johnson yeah. well hang on a second i just yeah. want to say we need to do that when covid's not a thing too oh yeah, yeah, yeah. wash That's your hands true. people yeah. wash, wash your hands, hands. okay hashtag ahead. wash hands i know i love it yeah. here we go dr johnson here's a statement social yeah. distancing is not natural for children myth or fact i i think there's a little bit of truth and a little bit of of myth in that one um i think that you know it, something I read recently suggested that we need to replace um, the term social distancing with physical distancing Fair enough. Um, because we are social creatures and we absolutely do need together and need to be together rather and touch is very important. Absolutely. Um, but I think we can connect very easily in ways that do not require us to be physically um, that close to each other. And so, yes, it's totally normal and natural and, and appropriate for kids to like, want to run up and hug their grandma and want to tackle each other. And they don't, they don't necessarily understand it. Um, but with some guidance and, and creativity and all those things, they can do just fine with it. Here we go. Thank you. That's I like this one. Dr. Cover. Here's a statement. Uh, ultraviolet disinfection lamps kill coronavirus in children. Myth or fact? Uh, that's going to be a bit of a myth. Yeah. It's, it's, so, you know, ultraviolet, there's been a lot of, lot of uh, talk about that. Um, and, you know, Putting it on, putting your phone under an ultraviolet light, who cares? Putting your money and all that stuff that is going to be in circulation, you know, people should disinfect your phone. They say it's one of the dirtiest things. But putting your child under an ultraviolet light, no one knows what it's going to do. And you don't want to find out that, you know, 10 years later, like all that ultraviolet light for 20 minutes gave them skin cancer. Absolutely. Here we go. Thank you for clearing that. Here we go, Dr. Johnson. I like this one. Um, matter of fact, spraying alcohol or chlorine over my child's body can kill coronavirus. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. I don't care what anybody tells you. The ble bleaches, bleaching your child is not a good idea. Um, the, the part where that is actually true, though, is that, you know, you do want to make sure your, um, your disinfectants have a high enough alcohol content, your, you know, specifically your hand sanitizers and things like that. You want them to be over 70% alcohol um, to make sure they do kill, you know, enough of the viruses that we need them to. Um, but, I, but I would limit your... Um, covering your children with isopropyl or ethyl alcohol to just their hands from the little squirt of hand sanitizer. Please don't like give them a Purell shower or spray them with bleach. There we go. I Please got you. Here we go. Dr. Kovar, myth or fact, here's a statement. Swimming in a public pool carries no risk for transmission 
of the novel coronavirus. Uh, if anyone's ever been to a public pool, I think there's a lot of risks of everything. So, um, you know, and also we know that, you know, if you're swimming in a, in a public pool, uh, you know, kids are going to get up, you're going to swallow a little bit of water, you're going to cough it up, stuff like that. So now we've aerosolized things. Um, kids also, let's face it, once you're in a pool, every kid, what do they do? They go meet someone else and they try to dunk them underwater. So you're going to get that. You're going to get more coughing. You're going to get more aerosolization. So no, it's not the safest place to be right now. All right, here we go. There was a recent, there was a recent statement from, I think it was the CDC saying, oh, you can't catch COVID from pool water. Um, so a lot of people have taken that as a green light to go have things like pool parties. Um, but like you said, Dr. Kovar, it's not, it, it's not necessarily, like you can't necessarily catch it from pool water, right? Like, so if someone goes in the pool and they get out and then you get in the pool, like that's, that's what the CDC is talking about. But if you're right. in the pool with anybody, you're at as much risk as, as much as if you're standing next to them and probably more, right? Cause you're coughing and sputtering and doing all those things. Absolutely. Look at the Lake of the Ozarks. I mean, the outbreak was there. Right. Got to exactly. the there. So yeah. aerosolization and there for that time. Here we go. A couple more of these. I'll take this one. I read that garlic is a healthy food and may have some antimicrobial properties. Therefore, my child can just eat a lot of garlic to help prevent coronavirus infection. That is a myth. That's a little bit under the, under the maybe more of an anecdotal thing that garlic does help out fortify the immune system. But here's what I say for immune system. Exercise, eat healthy, sleep, stress management, don't smoke cigarettes, don't drink alcohol, and nurture the mind-body relationships. Here we go. I like this one. Dr. Kovar, temperature scanners, here's the statement, temperature scanners can be used to detect infants and children infected with coronavirus. Myth or fact? Uh, that is definitely a myth. Uh, temperature scanner. scanners detect temperature. That's it. And, uh, there's not, it's not a special <laughs> space I like, age I like thing. Your- I like your I like your answer that one. It that, yeah. so <laughs> okay. it's, that's that's pretty much it. They're a thermal meter. So um, you know the the thing is that people are like oh my kid doesn't have a temperature or they do have a temperature. Just having a temperature doesn't mean your kid's got corona. You could have an ear infection. They could have teething. There's so many things that can cause little. They could be especially for infants. They could be wrapped overly tight in a warm house because it's the summer. You went out for a walk. So that doesn't necessarily mean does not necessarily mean corona. All right, here we go. That's Mr. Suspects, everybody. I love it. So we got about five minutes.